So we've heard a lot of announcements come from Photokina 2018 and some that I've already covered and broke them down a little bit, the previews and, and some of the things that are developed. But there were some things that I also didn't touch upon and I got a lot of requests why I didn't touch upon this type of camera that was announced or coming out, etc. So this is basically the recap of everything coming out and I'll get a little bit more specific with about four of them that I didn't cover. But let's go over real quick what's been covered and then break down some of the others and there's your recap of Photokina. I might reference a note or two here, but so this is everything that we know and these are the list that I've already talked about and we don't really need to go into. We have, we recently talked about the Ricoh GR3. A lot of street photographers will like this camera in my opinion. We have the Fuji GFX 50R, the $4,500 X-Pro2 beefier body, you know, consumer medium format camera. The Fuji GFX 100 megapixel camera. The Panic S1R and S1 full frame, not micro four thirds, which a lot of people are shocked about. And there's a petition going around on like change.org to get a touch screen. That's rather interesting. And then we obviously know about the Nikon Z6, Z7, Nikon's foray into full frame mirrorless, and then Canon's EOS R. Then there were a couple that I didn't talk about, you know, for some reasons, but there's been a lot of interest and hype in it and a lot of questions on maybe why I didn't do it. And this is the, the Zenit M, which is the Zenit and like a you know, cooperating together to make a to make a camera. The Leica S3, the Zeiss ZX1, and the Pix2. That's interesting. When I know you hear Leica, you obviously hear that's a lot of money for a Leica. And the Zenit M thing is basically going to be a in-between is what they feel. And Leica is obviously working with them. And it's going to be based on the Leica M Type 240. So when you look at the actual body, it kind of resembles the body. And it's going to have technologies kind of you know, interchange and Frankenstein in there. It's gonna come with a Zenitar Prime 35 millimeter F1.0, you know, very, very shallow depth of field. It's gonna be a full frame sensor, most likely 24 megapixels, 1080p video. So it's gonna be rather interesting with something like that. And it should be available in December for Europe, uh, January 2019, obviously for Russia. And then not, you're not 100% sure on the shipping and the price yet for the US or the price in general. Digital rangefinder camera, you know, still like it into it. It's gonna cost a lot of money. You know, how much money, I'm not sure. You have like the M10 line, the, you know, even the like a Q's over $4,000. So you're gonna see an interesting gap there, but you know, something like this at $3,000 is interesting. Not something for me, but I'd be interested to see your thoughts. And then we do have a Leica that no one, not many people will be able to afford. And that's the Leica S3, medium format camera. It's going to be a very, very large, beefy body. I know a lot of people are against those. But once again, it's 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 not going to be as small and as compact as what Fuji's been doing. But it's, you know, Leica, 64 megapixels. So if you're interested in the resolution, you got it there. There you go. It should be ready of spring 2019. If yeah, you know, you got almost an expected $20,000 lying around. Save that up for the spring. Dynamic range is supposed to be 15 stops and ISO pretty good up to 50,000 according to the test and some of the hands-on that people have with the Leica S3 out there. It's gonna come up from uh, 1.5 frames per second from the S2 and will be three frames per second in the S3. If you have these high, you know, resolution cameras, you're not really gonna look for a ton of frames per second, but the more you get, better once again to be a large camera but it says it will have full 4k video and uhd 1080p as well so nah it's not for me but to me this is probably one of the exciting other ones i didn't talk about and that is the zeiss zx1 there were a lot of teasers out for this but once again there's no price or shipping date for this this is the announcement that that this, that this is coming but it's going to be a zeiss full frame 37.4 megapixel camera uh, the body looks interesting. It's, you know, eloquently designed. Uh, fixed lens, 35 millimeter uh, Zeiss Istagon F 2.0. So once again, it's built into there. I don't think you're gonna be able to change them, obviously. And then the big thing is, this is gonna be called the Lightroom camera because Adobe Lightroom is built into the camera. Do we really need that? I don't know. I don't know if that's exciting. To me, it's like I, I edit my own photos on my computer. Do you need to do them in camera? But seriously, if this is interesting to you, the Lightroom thing built into the camera, let me know down below. But it is very minimalistic. You will basically see no buttons or dials on this thing, just a few. 4.3 uh, LCD touchscreen, so you get that. Apparently a, uh, e an OLED EVF viewfinder. Once again, great. It will have a leaf shutter, which is great. High speed sync and everything. 
Uh, UHD up to 30 frames per second, 1080p up to 60 frames per second. Uh, and if you're doing video, your record limit is 15 minutes. So once again, a lot of these cameras you're not gonna be buying for the video aspects go from there. And to further prove that, there is no headphone jack or mic input in this camera. So you will just get what's on the, you know, what's on the camera. The most interesting thing is that there is no storage, external storage. You have a 512 gigabyte SSD, solid state drive built into the camera. And that is insane. Uh, and to also transport that information, your, you know, your video, your pictures that will be via USB-C. So no external media, you won't have dual slots, but you'll have a 512 gigabyte SSD in there. So two interesting things, that solid state drive and it being a Lightroom camera. <sighs> Lastly, but not leastly, I'm calling this the LOL camera for laughing out loud. I think it's kind of a joke, but if someone's really interested in this, I'd love to hear your defense on that. But this is the Pix2 camera. This is, what do they call this? It's gonna work like a smartphone accessory and it's gonna be called the iPod of photography. Good God. So this one will also be a partnership with Leica. There's not much out there on it, just a couple pictures floating around, a lot of teasers. And one of the biggest quotes on the website is, it will be a radical take on what a modern camera should be. Once again, that's that's their tagline. Um, and once again, it's, it's not the most appealing looking. They're going for a smartphone accessory, essentially. You'll control, you know, you'll have the count, you'll have some functionality on the camera, but if you want to view the photos or do anything, you got to pull up your phone. There will be no back screen on this thing. It will have the Leica M mount, so you will have a little bit of functionality with it. You'll have an optical viewfinder, uh, manual controls, and you'll be able to shoot raw. Cool, it's like every camera. And the justification for the screen is to make it more pure. It's the smartphone accessory. It's to have no distracting screen and to give you longer battery life. Thing literally better cost under $500 because that's ridiculous. But what do you think? So with everything announced in Photokina 2018, tell me some of your favorites and maybe I broke some of the ones down that you wanted to hear. So let me know your thoughts on that down below. The Zeiss camera, it's interesting. Nothing I would ever do. The Pix2 is, is kind of a joke. Um, and then, you know, you have the rest I've talked about and I'll list those down below and probably create some kind of a playlist if you want to look at those more in depth. But what's one of your favorite cameras to hear in, you know, from Photokina? Did you rent? Are you going to buy any of them? What's interesting to you? Let me know down in the comments below. That's it, that's Photokina. What is the, why does the interest in the Pix2? Can you please tell me that?